So what are the main symptoms when you're looking at B12 deficiency? Let me, let me go to my cheat sheet. <laughs> so the major ones were development and intellectual delay, hypotonia, tremor, seizure, and failure to thrive. In addition, they generally have speech and linguistic problems and social impairments. So we know the social impairments, they have this thing where they turn away and they don't want to participate and they seem to be disjoint and they don't bond well. They have behavioural disorders, which is one of the common things that people say that you can't control the kids. And they also have this problem with the fine motor skill and gross motor movement that you see with them. So they they can't stack blocks when they should be able to do, they can't turn things over. So these are things that a developmental person would be able to see much easier than I can. And I must confess, that I've never sat in a room with a child with autism at any age between 2 and 10 or 15. So this is definitely not me who's looking at this. This is somebody else who's doing this analysis. So new age autism, that is the next thing I want to discuss. You've covered on it that it's paradoxical B12 deficiency where the serum B12 is high but is largely inactive. So why is that? So the issue is that part of B12 cycling is that it, it normally involves the introduction of folate somewhere in the cycle. And a folate backbone, backbone starts, it's methylated, so 5,10-methylene tetrahydrofolate. And then that has to move through an enzyme called methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. That enzyme requires FAD or the active um, component of vitamin B2. So there's where the iodine comes in because you need iodine, sodium, and molybdenum to activate B2. Without that, you don't get the folate coming through. So you can't properly cycle B12 because normally methyl B12 donates its methyl group to homocysteine to make the thionine. And if you can't regenerate that methyl B12 with the folate, you have inactive B12. That inactive B12 is starts as cobalt 1 B12 and then it goes to cobalt 2 B12. And to normally to regenerate cobalt 2 B12, you need two uh, vitamin B2 components. One is FMN, flavin mononucleotide, and the other one is FAD, flavin adenine dinucleotide. So in functional B2 deficiency, you start to rapidly generate inactive B12. So you now have functional B12 deficiency. So this is different from classical B12 deficiency due to like a diet. So in this instance, you've got plenty, you can have plenty of B12, but it's basically inactive. So it's not doing what it's supposed to do, and that's the methylate, or be involved in the methylation cycle, or correctly. 